Time for us to go viral. Anthony Davis is putting up career numbers in his first season with the Lakers. And though most expect the Brow to re-sign with L.A., he's keeping his hometown, Chicago, on the back burner. I mean, obviously, you know, it's nothing like playing at home. Playing at home. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I am a free agent next year, so we'll see how that goes. Next question, next question. <laughs> Thank you. 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 He's playing to his crowd. You play to your crowd. You do. That's you what do. you do. Yeah, you play absolutely. to your crowd. There, but there is a second level to it. Okay. He is a free agent, and obviously he's best served playing center for the Lakers. He doesn't want to play center for the Lakers. He wants to play the four. And would like him to. The most, he has the ultimate leverage because he's never once, need, nor has his agent Rich Paul committed that he is resigning with the Lakers. Now, I believe he is resigning with the Lakers, but. Don't don't make me unhappy now. The Bulls, they'll have a max cap space for me. Don't do so me I like that, AD. Don't do me like that, man. We traded the entire team basically for you to come from the wall as we need you. I found out. Just so I'm clear, both now. of you guys are now like, are you both? Well, I've always, I've Lakers. always been oh, a Laker oh, fan. Yeah. Nick oh. is on the no. LeBron James bandwagon. Yeah, I'm not a Laker fan. He's not I a want to make fan. this very clear. Yeah. I root for greatness, and the greatest athlete ever happens to currently play for the Lakers. Yep. So as long as that's the case, I will be rooting for LeBron and by proxy the Lakers. But I'm not a Laker by fan. Kenny is a Died in the wool Laker fan, I found out. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. Well, I mean, before Are LeBron James guy? came there, there wasn't a no. really a reason to advertise that. Yeah. Just saying. No, he's a Virginia guy. I, I, I did know that. It was a little I'm more. A Virginia guy. I'm, what a, you, I'm a Bronx guy. What are you talking about? Dropped 44 points on the Grizzlies, led the team to a win, while Russell Westbrook took a load management night. The old popular load management night. Nick, how impressive was the beard last night? Listen, if James is going to do what James does. The difference was last night his shot was actually falling. Mm -hmm. He has been abysmal from three-point range this season. Out going into last night, aside from one game last night, he hit threes, and that was why. That was why. He he had 44. That was why they won. The Rockets have some more systemic issues that are not solved by one good James Harden night, but they can't win with him shooting 22% from three as he was going into last night's game. So it was good to see his shot get back on track. Yeah, Jenna, it looked a lot different than it did at the Barclays on Friday night for James Harden. But here's what I'll say. His performance was impressive. The team, not so much. They were tied midway through the third quarter with a Memphis Grizzlies team that's rebuilding and no Jaron Jackson. So I, I don't know what to make of the Rockets, but that team has got to tighten up on the defensive end. Now, that's Ooh. saying a lot for a Dan Tony coach team, no, but if but they're right. going to compete in the West, they're going to have to stop somebody at some point. All right, the Lakers are now sitting atop the Western Conference. Great news for Chris Canny, who we found out is a Laker fan, even though he's not from California. <laughs> LeBron James is a big reason why, posting triple doubles and back-to-back -back games and leading the NBA in assists. After Friday night's game, LeBron hopped on the gram, posted this. My drive and passion will outweigh your hate. Nothing you can do to stop me. You only help me. Hashtag revenge season. Hashtag the kid from Akron. He's big mad, Nick. Big mad. Yeah. What? Nick, can it re-energize LeBron, lead the Lakers to an NBA title? Yeah, he can. Looks like he will. Looks, you know what year 17 LeBron looks like? Year 14 LeBron. Mm. Or year 11 LeBron. Or year seven LeBron, or basically the LeBron James we've gotten every single year after his rookie season. Yeah. The rookie season comes in, he's a 21, five and five guy. And since then, despite oddly never actually having a 27, seven and seven game in his whole career, he's given you 27, seven and seven. Uh, year in, year out. This year, he's doing it a little differently. One less point, one more rebound, four more assists. 26, 8, and 11. He's playing out of position, but that out of position is allowing him to lead the NBA in assists by a wide margin. He right now is, if you care about the nerdy defensive stats, he's a top three defensive player, defensive player in the league so far this year. And it turns out for the first time in a decade, not having a 100 game season. We saw the, the no teams had gone to four straight finals until recently when the Heat did it, the Cavs did it, the Warriors did it, obviously. The Warriors amazingly went to five straight. And now the entire team is injured. Hmm. Every, like everyone that's a part of it. There's no, is one, dealing, left. There's no one left right, right now playing. Because bodies are not built to play five consecutive 100 game seasons. LeBron played eight consecutive. And then his groin gave out on him, and last year was a lost season. 
and then he got some rest, got some rejuvenation, spent some time, it would appear, on a very nice boat in the south of France, <laughs> and he came back and reminded everybody, hey, that best player in the world title, it still goes through me. And with him playing like this, Kenny, and Anthony Davis being Anthony Davis, and the Lakers actually having a living, breathing NBA head coach, I don't know if Frank Vogel's great, but he sure as hell ain't Luke Walton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the best team in the NBA right now. Oh, no doubt about it. And you talked about LeBron James and that injury that he had last year. That was probably the best thing for his career, knowing that he's get a, getting a little bit older. The fact that he was able to get some rest this past offseason, not having an extended playoff run, he can come back this year and be rejuvenated. But I go back to something that Nick noticed at the beginning of last season about LeBron's game. And he said, LeBron didn't look as engaged defensively. It looks completely different this season in terms of his engagement on the defensive end. All you got to do is go back to that Mavs game on Friday Ooh. and look at how he played in the final minutes of that game in the fourth quarter and in overtime. He took over that game, but it was started with his defense. The fact that he set the tone for that team and that they've embraced defense as being the identity for them, I think that's going to bode well for them because at the end of it, I think it will be the Lakers and the Clippers. We know the Clippers can play lockdown defense, but I think that this LeBron James, if we get this version of him the entire season, especially on the defensive end, I think this Lakers team is right there. And ultimately, when you look at the star power, I trust LeBron James and Anthony Davis a little bit more than I trust Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. But, but Nick, this is almost like LeBron... I don't want to say 2.0, it's like 7.0, if you will. He leads the league in assists, so he's obviously just altered his game a little bit. Yep. He's playing defense for the first time in a long time. He's actually enjoying playing with the people around him. Just talk to me a little bit about that. Well, I think the the, the defense point, the, the team right now, they're the number one defense in basketball. They have the number one defensive rating. They're number one in opponent field goal percentage. They're second in opponent threes. And, so they're, and that's where Vogel gets credit, because that is what he was known for in Indiana. Didn't work out for him in Orlando, but that's where Vogel gets credit and it helps when you have Anthony Davis on the inside and LeBron out on the perimeter. But where LeBron made a point after the game, I think it was Friday night uh, against the Mavs, mm. where he was asked about his defense. And he said, here's what's never happened to me my whole career. No one's ever singled me out defensively, meaning they don't hunt him <laughs> the way Steph would get hunted. Like, oh, let me get LeBron on a switch, where his on-ball defense has always been exceptional. Where it lagged last year and where it lagged in the regular season the last few years with the Cavs was his off-ball defense was lackadaisical, was at times he almost seemed like he wasn't paying full attention on the court, which is very not like what we're used to LeBron first decade of his career. This year, I think to set the tone for the team, it has been the opposite. His off-ball defense has been exceptional. He's always making the right switch. He's always getting to the right place. The offense, he will always be an A-plus offensive player because even right now when his shot's not falling, he's the best passer in basketball and he's got Anthony Davis as a cheat code to dump the ball down to. So the Lakers right now have a league average offense. That'll get better. If they can be a top five defense and right now they're the number one defense, they will not only be the best team in basketball, they will clearly be the best team in basketball because to your point, that's where the Clippers are supposed to have a huge edge. Yes. That the Clippers are supposed to have a huge edge defensively, expecting the Lakers would have an edge offensively. Up to this point in the season, that has not been the case. No, it hasn't been the case. And LeBron James told us coming into this season, a lot of people been playing with the throne. Yeah. Now he's gonna be back with a vengeance. Guess what? He's, he's back. I like it. He's still the best player in the league. It's only been 14 straight years.